Apostle Paul, Paul uh, Peter said that we are aliens. And the video I'm about to show was done by a brother who came there a year and a half ago. He's a professional photographer. It's pretty good quality stuff. Um, can you stop for just a minute? <laughs> um, thanks. I just want to say a few things before we started. Um, there won't be sound or there will be sound? Can we put a mic on it down there or that won't work? All right, we'll be without sound, no problem. Um, still better than slides. So um, I, need, I think I'm having a perspective shift and I'm going to say something here that might hurt some feelings, but I don't think we're here to just have our feelings comforted, but to be challenged in the Lord. The perspective shift is so many years, 33 years I've been there as an adult with my wife in Africa, and we feel like we're aliens, um, you know, and we're kind of starting a, a, a base, a kingdom base, a kingdom colony for Christ in the middle of all kinds of false teachings and paganism. The city we're in is Kamasi. It is the central city in the country of Ghana, in the middle of the country. Um, the first scenes will be the central part of that city. Kamasi means under the kum tree. It's a pagan city. Satan has a stronghold there. Just a few weeks ago, the Santihini, the highest chief, was pouring out libations to the gods on every corner. The, the chief hospital has a guy dancing with a horse tail, a budria, uh, a horse tail, and he's calling down the sacred, uh, to them, uh, the uh, golden stool. They skinned alive several chiefs to get power for their first campaign as a Santi kingdom that we live among. And to this day, paganism permeates everything. It, over that's a veneer of Christianity. Funerals are where they worship the dead. We had a big debate, a big problem with that recently. We are in a spiritual battle there, and we are, we are the aliens trying to establish a kingdom post there. But, you know, my perspective shift is that's going to be, have to be the mentality here. You are the aliens among a wicked and perverse generation, increasingly godless and proud of it when those who want to be president can walk down city streets promoting pride in sodomite behavior. We are in serious jeopardy here. And the mentality we've had there as a small minority of white people, you know, or Americans, in a, what we've seen as a pagan city, with our family having to draw close together and the saints are coming out of that, having to come out of their culture, come out of their culture and be new people, be aliens, that's gonna have to be here. So I hope that what's happening there will be encouragement to you. The Lord is everywhere Amen. and his power is complete. And uh, we can be successful strangers, sojourners, wherever we're at, and, but we have to come out, come out of Babylon, come out of the culture, come out, come out of Egypt. There's no staying in with one foot and then the other foot's in the kingdom. It doesn't work. Amen. And uh, we're in a great spiritual battle there. So this video is just to show you where we live. And I would really encourage you to become a Facebook friend with me because I put out lots of posts of the work there and what God's doing there. Or if you still don't have Facebook, you can get an email. And this video, we could probably make a copy if you want to see the, the whole thing. So uh, we'll let it run now, and uh, I'll talk while it's running. I won't have to worry about noise. This is the center of this. There's a, there he is, dancing right there. There's that, there he is. See, I didn't tell you a lie. He's, he's right there. That's the chief hospital in our city. He's a kunfu anachi. He's witch doctor or sorcerer anachi. So that kind of verifies what I said. I forgot it was in there. I just showed this once. Uh, we, we deal with a lot of hassles of a country that is very poor. Uh, a hotel manager makes $140 a month. Average workers make $30 to $50 a month. Gasoline's $4 a gallon or more. Never came down, even after all the fracking and the oil went down, and we got $1.65 somewhere in Missouri, I saw it. Not in Ghana. Life's very difficult there. Uh, this is an example of that. This is a prosthetic for a girl we helped who is 16 years old. Her, she's in the bush country. Her name was Janet, kind of given to her. And this is an artificial leg this man is making by hand for her. A top of the quality material they, for there. And uh, that poor girl, every time she came to the city, she gained weight because we'd feed her well. She went to the bush, she'd lose weight, and so the leg never fit. Uh, it, very difficult living conditions there. But uh, 
we're not there primarily to give people a, a physical leg to walk on, but spiritual legs. Our prime focus is discipleship, making disciples for Jesus who will become like Jesus. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you change a country? One disciple, one family at a time. We're not into biggie stuff. We're not into masses. We're not into big numbers. Individuals matter. We're always confronted with the physical needs of people. Anybody who travels across to other countries that are poor, the third world, developing world, they're going to see the beggars, they're going to see lepers, they're going to see blind people, they're going to see so many things. We do help, and as we're given funds, we try to help wisely, not to make dependent people, not to make people dependent on American money, that's a huge problem, but to help in a meaningful way to show the love of Christ and open a door so that we can reach more souls for Christ. That's the central market, all transportation for the entire country comes right through here. So Apostle Paul went to Ephesus, he went to Athens, he went to Corinth. We are centered, we've been there 30 years in this, well, no, we went here to this city, Kamasi, in 1994. So we've been in two places, Sunyani before that for 10 years, and then in this city. We've raised our children here, they've gotten married here, they've gone off to minister in Cameroon, India, northern Ghana. Uh, one's in college in eastern North Carolina to become a nurse and come back, that's Jackson, our adopted boy. We've got another girl going to Cameroon who's 22. She was a Muslim. So we have had a fam family of six, three of our own, three adopted. They're all serving the Lord full time. Um, ladies selling bread, just typical scenes you see in the third world. Uh, we have to deal with power off. We have terrible power. It's off 24 hours, 13 hours, and uh, so forth. That's our house. We keep the front very plain. It's got plenty of floors, uh, space inside of it. We rent it. Uh, but we have a lot of armed robbers in our area, so the bamboo's like a disguise. You can't see through into there very well. And uh, we thank God for this house. Four years now we've been here. We use it for camps. We use it for baptisms often. Uh, and I have some chickens. You can speed through the chickens if you want to. Uh, it's just a little side note. But this is where we live uh, and serve God. We have uh, 15 grandkids that are... Uh, Precious to us, plus about 15 more that call us grandparents that are not directly grandkids, but they are. So a lot of our ministry has been to help the parents to be able to have good marriages, help them ministering all over Ghana and in different places. That's coconut. You can go fast with this, brother, if you got a fast. This is just life in Africa. You know, a little bit of coconut juice there. All right, that's our house devotions. We, we have family devotions and Bible studies in our house uh, Tuesday, on Thursday, on Friday. We have assemblies at our, the congregation there, uh, Lord's Day, morning, evening, Wednesday evening. So we're in the Word all the time in that way. That's our oldest daughter, Jessica, is married to Ghanaian, and he's also an American citizen. They have five children, and they're working with us full time. They've helped to develop a daycare, preschool, ministry, along with our Christian school. Um, the man who came just filmed whatever was going on then, so they're getting their hair done the local African way. Paul says, all things to all men in order that by all possible means I may win some. So we know the language. We learn the language. Um, try to identify. That's Abby on the left. She's our adopted daughter. She's dying of tuberculosis, and uh, God saved her. And she has two children now, even though her body's twisted so badly by, by the de disease, and she and her husband are working in the north. This is just a little fountain we made at our house working together. This is household stuff. We can go through this too. We have volunteers come. One of my gifts, I guess the Lord's given me, is to train young men, and they go out and then do the work of the Lord. Uh, it's a bl blessing to have them come. We lift weights. We study. Uh, we have one young man back there, uh, Brother Todd Vanderbilt. He's been with us four years. And he's a very apt preacher and teacher of God's Word. He's worked in our school. And he's going to go to India in a month or so to help work in India for a while. Being a single person, he's very free to go wherever he needs to. He uh, has great faith. So, Brother Todd, glad you're here with your dad. This is our neighborhood. This little boy here, Charles, uh, all his siblings and his mother in this one room. Uh, power is off lots of times. Charles, uh, we worked with him three years and he left. 
He's running around like a wild thing. It's a heartbreaking ministry to reach out to street kids and to abandoned children and neglected children. Sometimes they come for a while and it's too hard. Memory work, discipline, and they leave. And they come back. So your heart like breaks and is healed. And my, my daughter said years ago to do this kind of ministry, you have to have a, it's like a heart that can stretch and 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 doesn't break. The Lord sends healing in his wings because you love these kids and you love these people and you think, you know, you know that you're helping them, but they're, sometimes a relative will take them out of our school. And like anywhere in the world, people don't always stay faithful. And that's my biggest heartache is when we invest 10 years in someone and then they just walk away because of the devil. There's no easy place on earth to do ministry. With people are people. The devil is the devil. This is Sherry. She's a very good teacher of scripture. Uh, she helps me in counseling uh, married couples and uh, non-married couples and in just daily dealing with the ministry. I have one of those over there now. <laughs> but I preach uh, to the children in the school every single day, Monday through Friday. Preach Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. I believe you know, at funerals I preach, at weddings we preach, about 45 minutes when we have a, a wedding. And um, these are some of the men, this is a year and a half ago, uh, that we have been developing. This is one of our key men, Gordon, a great man in God. I'm very proud or thankful, I guess proud in the Lord, to announce that when I left, Mr. Godwin Wonder with five children, uh, American wife, they met in our ministry. He's now the interim evangelist and preacher there. He's a local man from that town. His mother worshipped I mean, his father worshiped a tree, still does. We have students and people here that worship, uh, their, their parents worship the river god, uh, cat's head. The man playing the guitar is my son-in-law, Atta. Some of you know him, and he's uh, married to Jessica, our oldest. We do have some uh, guitars and things. I'm glad to hear our brother say he's not against that. <laughs> Gone in drums and uh, lively singing. I wish you could hear it uh, next time, or if you get a copy of this. But... Lively singing, uh, people in Africa sing very nicely. They have powerful and beautiful voices. That's my son on the left with his wife. They have three children, and they are flying to Cameroon from France today, Jeremiah and Brittany. And uh, Benoit and his wife, our second daughter, Rebecca, are flying from Malaysia to back to Kerala, India today. They went there for the Asia Missionary Forum which is uh, non-instrumental churches have a yearly Asian forum, and he's able to share with people from all over the world at that meeting. Uh, he actually hosted one a few, some years ago. And I'll just say this while you're watching this. I, we do not want, brother, this is a hard thing I was going to say and never said, but listening to things here of people who talk about a powerless religion, like Brother Blakely, some of you are refugees from it hear about being in the wilderness out there. I got to just tell you, it's a little bit discouraging to me, in a way. I don't want to be involved in a ministry that produces a powerless religion there so that 20 years from now, we're trying to rec recover. Whatever is going right here now, we want to put into effect right now. Personal discipleship, edification of the saints, participation by the saints, not, I hate ritual. And we're fighting a destruction of ritual campaign. We want people from the heart with piet, piety and great purpose. This is my daughter, one of the greatest young ladies on earth. She has dedicated her life to the ministry since she was a young girl. She's the top of the line. And uh, five children, two of them born in her house in Ghana. It takes... Faith, we know a lot of missionaries that fly home to have all their babies. And she, she's married, like I said, to Ghanaian, local health care. She has to go in that. They didn't own a car until recently. We got a van that we both used. It was very simply, $140 apartment. Um, you know, living a very simple life like an African. Uh, I really appreciate Jessica Asebra. Teaching the children to read is not so they can get money. Our purpose of our Christian school, we've run now for 20 years, and we've helped start about five other schools uh, across the country, and one in Togo, which is partly using our system, one in Cameroon, and also one in, in uh, India. 
our goal is to help the people be equipped and empowered to know the scripture. Amen. And if you can't, try taking, taking someone who can't read and teaching the book of Romans or Revelation or Ezekiel. At some point, the brethren need meat. They need meat. They need to get at it like a bucket for the well. And that is being able to read and write and understand thoroughly. Not just a minimal education. My kids went to the same school. Jeremiah graduated from it and got a full scholarship to Marist University in, in, out in a, New York. Transferred to the University in Ghana and got his political science degree on scholarship. High SAT. It's a, we have a very academic program. It's not easy. But we're training future leaders for the Lord's church. Not that we believe that academics is, is as important as knowing Christ or, or being led by the Holy Spirit or being edified. No, but the means of that edification is through the Word of God. And so Apostle Paul said, I write nothing to you except what you can read and understand to the Corinthians. And there must have been a lot of people who could understand his letters and read them and reread them. And I, I saw the, the, the thing about literature from Brother Boyce. Well, if you can't read it, it doesn't have any power in it. And we have then reached out to the poorest of the poor children who have nothing. We saw little Charles earlier. And they're getting the kind of education that only the rich kids would get in academies, uh, you know, private schools or tutoring. 50% of kids fell um, elementary school. 50% of that, 50% fell uh, secondary school. 50% of those who make it to college fail. So your percentage to get a college education is very small. Those who even get a high school education is very small. But these children, if they persevere, which is, there's Brother Todd right there doing his job, uh, and it takes great patience. These kids are wild. They come from wild backgrounds. Some of them don't know how to use a bathroom when they get there. They, I mean, they're from the bush country. They're from uh, the ghetto. And so they have to be taught to wash their hands, to tie their shoes. They have to be taught to, to have some basic manners. They have to be taught to read, to speak any English at all. It's intensive work, very intensive. And it takes lots of time. There's no quick way to do it. It's not like Jiffy Wave popcorn you put in and take it out, or Jiffy Pop, I should say, popcorn. It's, but step by step and year by year, uh, persevering, we're able to see these kids start to be transformed. Let's run to the end real quick. Uh, just the camp we have every year. We have a, I run a yearly camp for the, all the churches that we've helped to start. I don't know, there's probably been about 30 churches started. Not all of them have, have, have lasted. Some have, have uh, fallen out like in, you see in the book of Revelation. Uh, others are hanging in there and others are growing. But we have a yearly camp. Can we, our time's about up? So let's go forward a little bit. This is Christiana, uh, one of our First, our first convert's daughter. These, so many of the Ghanaian brethren are giving back, ministering all over, as of doing evangelism, helping with the schoolwork, discipling, and so forth. You can go way forward if you want to, brother. There you go. There you go. Okay. Just those are the Christmas programs are always cute. <laughs> Let's go for a little more, though. A little more. Pretend you can hear them. They sound so sweet. All right. Right there is good. So every year we have a camp. Uh, it's pretty rudimentary. Uh, I was just thinking about the wonderful um, hospitality we've had from the Blakeleys and uh, pizza and, uh, you know, the house is air-conditioned and there's hot water and they gave us a comfortable bed. Uh, you sleep there on the floor, on the concrete. You bring your own foam. Um, but the fellowship's what counts. This young man I was speaking to is our first Ghanaian uh, disciple, and he's working for a phone company. He makes good money by Ghanaian standards, has three beautiful kids. He's in the capital and faithful to the Lord, knows the word, has grown in grace, a uh, good husband, a uh, Christian husband, and, um, you know, top quality, top shelf disciple of Christ, a uh, Christian brother. There's Brother Gordon leading uh, the singing. Again, you have to imagine you can hear it, the clapping, the singing, a lot of enthusiasm. These people have hard lives. And it seems to me the, the harder people's lives are, 
the more appreciative they are of Christ sometimes. It's all they have is heaven. We have a lot of distractions, don't we? What's Brother Given's uh, commentary on Colossians? 1,800 pages. Hey, I read it. I loved it. Um, but something about distractions in there? And this is our battle here, isn't it? To, to focus on spiritual things because we do have a lot of blessings here by the grace of God. And they don't have to be distractions. But these people, this brother on the right, Brother Daniel's from a country, 23 of his pigs are recently killed and slaughtered by his neighbors because they hate him for his Christianity. Brother Normus Emmanuel, one of our first disciples, um, drives a taxi from 11 to 2 o'clock. The one before Daniel, I wanted to tell you, um, he lives... We're the first white people to ever go to his village. We had to cross three rivers to get there. His wife was a pagan juju worshiper for years. To see the transformation of these people who now worship the one true God. And you know what? You have to be able to tell these people who live in this kind of environment where juju or voodoo is everywhere. You have to be able to look them in the eye and say, all the powers of the devil, all those dark forces of wickedness, they believe, in, they believe in those things. They know there are witches and warlocks. They, I could tell you stories, firsthand and secondhand. They know that they're facing, a, we're not alone here, that there's a real unseen but male, malevolent, how do you say it? Enemy, the devil and his legions. And they, they, they have to be able to be told that God is greater. I've been accused of teaching sinless perfectionism. I've been asked about that by elders and other people. And I just tell them this. I want power to overcome. And they need power to overcome. You can't take someone from that background, take a little child like that and say, or anybody and say, look, you just do the best you can. God will forgive your sins, but after that, you're on your own. You've got to tell them that with the gift of the Holy Spirit, God, Christ living in them, they can overcome. The greater is he that's in you than he or it that's in the world. You've got to believe that. And I've told people all over America who've come to me about what I preach. I don't believe I'm God, and I don't believe I'm immune from temptation, and I don't believe it's, you know, that it's impossible for me to sin. Every day is a walk in the Spirit. And I, and I have to confess my sins still to God when I fall. But I do believe that the message we have, that we are light, and God is light, and in Him there's no darkness at all, is what dark continent Africa desperately needs not a powerless religion. They need power because I'm telling you the peer pressure in those villages is much greater than in high school in America or any town in America. Everything's done by the community. And if you can't stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or Daniel and be willing to even be persecuted and beaten and driven off, you can't be a Christian in those villages. Most missionaries have failed in that re respect. They've come from the States with a materialistic mind. They've tried to solve things with money, with materials, with resources, with programs, and it doesn't work. The people on the surface change, but underneath, there's no inner man change. They've got to become new creatures like Christ and reflect his glory by faith to overcome that pressure that Satan puts them under. And it's, gonna be, it's true here too, though. America is no Christian country, is it? So I hope that this short video uh, clip and the things I've said will encourage you. Uh, Sherry and I will be traveling all over America, about 20,000 miles, trying to encourage people, Romans chapter 1, 10, and 11, with our faith and be encouraged by their faith. And your faith has been encouraging us. I have taken things in, bits and pieces and this and that, and it's being put into my life and my wife's life. And we're, we're going to be enlarged, as you know, and when we go back to Africa, that's going to help us to not import powerless, traditional, ritualistic religion that has failed us here and failed our children. And one last thing I'll say is it, the best workers for the kingdom should be our own children raised in the church like Timothy, who didn't even have a, he didn't even have a, a Christian father, as far as we know. We, please, parents, dedicate your kids from their time they're conceived to the Lord like Hannah and anywhere God leads them Mongolia Ghana Joplin downtown you know anywhere give them to the Lord don't hold them back because the world needs 
light. Amen. And if my kids didn't help me like they've helped me, I don't know what I would have done. If my wife hadn't helped me, it's been a team of family team, Amen. working together with purpose Amen. to edify the saints and reach the lost and save them with the gospel. Amen. It's a difficult life. It's not for everybody, but it's a blessed life Amen. when we consider his blessings and what we are gaining as we minister and sacrifice and serve. We, in sacrificing and service, serving for the faith of others, we save ourselves. Paul said in, Rome, in Philippians 2.17, he said, even though I'm a drink offering, being poured out for your faith, he said, I rejoice and I share my, my joy with you all. He said, you too share in that joy also. It is a joy to be a missionary in Africa. I would not trade it with anybody, even though my body doesn't always like it. And brethren, I want you to be a missionary wherever God's put you. The word just means apostle or sent one. God has sent us into this world to be light. Amen. Amen.